in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on faith to centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you always thank you for watching be blessed there is a generation that will get it it is a hunger in the heart of God every generation will not miss it I have watched the videos of God's generals by the privilege of God's grace. I have heard of the things that they did. I have read about the church in Nigeria, the mighty men and women who God used and we salute everything they have done. But like every generation, we also saw their limitations. I'm telling you, there is a generation that will demonstrate God to the earth, that will dumbfound principalities and powers living walking miracles living walking miracles living walking miracles there are thrones there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be this hear me there are many of you beyond level one businessman I know you have learned all the laws of business but can I tell you that there are still demon spirits and they have the power to manipulate those laws so that even in your obedience of them they may not seem to happen this is where this other dimension comes the dimension through intimacy that you can speak with one word and shift the spiritual climate of a territory. I know this because it will happen. I have seen it many times in my visions and I don't know who will avail himself to say, Lord, there has to be a generation that will get it. There has to be a generation that will get it. Hallelujah. Watch this. Here's what Jesus said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, is that in your Bible? It says, shall he also do? Then it says, greater works. Hear me. Now, respectfully speaking, I salute all of us together for what we are doing. But when you hear me tell you that we are still, the version of spirituality we are in now is the version of typewriter technologically. There are still levels to enter. It's because of our slow place that is garnished by a lot of pride and arrival mentality. Thank God for the little we have seen. But believe me, I'm not just trying to be humble. I am telling you there are realms that we have not stepped into. Where we access the powers of the age to come. Men who become like God upon the earth. Hallelujah. When was the last time that you saw a flood about to wash a nation and you stood and said, Flood, thus far have you come. No further shall you go. Listen, 
we have so recycled the little results that we have that we have built a camp of mediocrity around it. No. Tonight's message is not for the nominal Christian who is satisfied with falling down and standing up. Tonight's message is not for the nominal Christian who just wants to give one prophecy, one word of knowledge. Tonight's message is not for someone who just wants to give Greek and Hebrew. We are talking of men who become living wonders, conduits of kingdom possibilities. Hallelujah. We brag about seeing angels. We brag about going to the realm of the spirit. We brag about meeting demons. We brag about meeting Jesus. But we cannot see the power that is connected to that intimacy. Because every time people met Jesus in the Bible, they came back with something they could prove. Now, I'm, I don't, I'm not trying to mock or be sarcastic. But I have read books of people who supposedly claim that they met Jesus every day for a long time. The Jesus you read in this Bible, find out those who met him for three and a half years. Look at what he left with them. They turned the world upside down. Whoever met Jesus and went back the same. Tell me one person who met Jesus. And yet we say we have met him. Yet we claim like we are drinking tea every day with him. And after all of that, the corresponding manifestation of power. Now, I have read my Bible. When Paul met him, look what happened to Paul. Paul, a, a hunger was in him that at the zenith of his apostolic ministry, all he could say is that I may know him. Let me meet him one more time. Let him do something to me. How about Peter? How about John? The madman at Gadara, he didn't have a vision of him every day. He met him once and became an evangelist. Can I tell you, we must re-examine the Jesus we have been seeing. Because I'm not trying to be sarcastic. Let me tell you the truth. I have read my Bible. Let God be true and all men liars. I have met Jesus and I know what happened to me. When you meet Jesus, there must be proof that you met him. The glory that emanates from your life find out what happened when Moses met him for 90 days Moses did not even know his face was shining is when he came down men said what is this they said what does it what kind of glow does it take to use a veil in the afternoon ladies and gentlemen this revival thing we keep talking about bar we're only going to waste our time if we don't mean business a genuine encounter with the God of the Bible, a genuine encounter with the Holy Spirit must leave a, a provable deposit of God within you that you can take back as a gift. Listen, we're ordinary men. There are times that some of these, my lovely children, come to me and I'm tempted to give them gifts. Sometimes I can bring out 10 naira. This is me, a man. Yet I know the value of seeing how I can respond to them. How much more the God of heaven? And he sat with you and spoke with you, Joshua Selman. You saw him. Is it true? Where is the proof? And you have the effrontery to say light left him and came to you. Where is the light? Swallow your pride. Tonight, come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know? In his hands are the keys to eternal life. It's a little here, a little there. And then your day will dawn. He's at work in you, changing everything. Hear me. There were men and women in the Bible who manifested certain dimensions of grace. Many of them have died today. But they left their dealings with God. The journey did not start for them by learning laws. It started by a pursuit of God. The prophet could look at the woman. How many of us can speak like Elisha? Madam, 
what do you want us to do for you how can a man speak like that should I talk to the president for you don't ask me how I know my ways to reach him and she says no I live among my people all of a sudden the servant comes to say I notice this woman has no child and cheaply this is not experimentation the prophet looks at her and says according to the time of life he never said call on me and update me with the result mm -mm. one statement these ones are not laws this is power that comes through intimacy that someone comes to meet you and says man of God this is the last opportunity there is somebody dying in the hospital that's not when you should start teaching principles of friendliness or administration and say you see the dieting is a very serious thing that is wonderful only when the person is going to leave this guy is dying let me tell you the kind of men that God is looking for people who will stand and say let that sick person come that you will know there is a prophet in Israel and with one pronunciation Naman no matter how long your leprosy is it is about to turn go and wash in Jordan seven times does not make sense but this is a realm higher than science and Naaman returns back and is healed. Jesus is strolling around Nain and he's seen a widow who is about to bury her child, haven't buried her husband. And Jesus says, stop, what is going on here? And the woman is crying and he says, drop that coffin down. My goodness, can I tell you, man of God, the day three dead people confirmed medically, come back to life in your church, whether it's poster or Facebook, you don't no matter what it is it is security that will have to protect you because of the way people will weary you I respect church growth principles but there are superior principles the manifestation of genuine power from heaven the Bible says where the carcasses are there the eagles will gather can I tell you there are people who pack full stadiums because footballers are about to play football and they pay for it and they smuggle their way through the space and they are happy when something spectacular begins to happen most of the miracles that happen to us are still within the realm of controversy that is the reason why it is not compelling enough did it really happen this wheelchair did the person really stand up this headache did it how are we sure all that there, there there are levels called notable miracles manifestations of the power of God that even the Sanhedrin council can say this one we cannot say anything against it power from on high that this woman was barren and suddenly comes with four children ah then just when you are trying to say some manipulation a dead body comes back to life five blind people Look at how this blindness that was struggling to open people's eyes. Is your eye open? The person said, my eye is not open. No, I'm not seeing. Yet, there was a prophet in the Bible who played with blindness and sight in a moment called Elisha. Lord, open his eyes. He opened the servant's eyes. Close the eyes of an army. Their eyes were closed. Take them to Samaria. Open their eyes. Look at, he was playing with it. That there is a formula. Listen. I'm not just entertaining you except you are not a believer what did this man know what did this man carry today if one blind eye is open whether verified or not we are so excited and thank God for it but what did the prophet know what did Elijah know that he could laugh at the prophets of Baal if you saw someone come with a charm right now a confirmed herbalist you say apostle where are you come and stand close to me as we pray because of fear yet Elijah was laughing and said call Baal maybe there was a time business was failing they could not catch any fish watch Jesus if I were the one I would now start teaching principles of fishing and there is a place for that I taught you come in the night put your net and allow the fish to just play around it are we together bait them with feed and then you come and drag it and you catch fish that is the principle of fishing but watch what Jesus does he says little children have you any catch and Peter says we've been struggling what do you mean by have you any catch he said cast your net to the right side game over 
cast your nets to the right side. It does not matter what, whether the fish, what if that grace can come on you as a man of God to speak over your business people? Do you know what can happen to them? You are not endorsing laziness, but that this guy is in debt already. It is not a principle that will bring him out of debt. A family, listen, when the prophet met a woman who was in debt, he did not share principles. Now, don't get me wrong. There are principles that can bring her. When she, when she, her debt issue was solved, he now said, go and sell and live with the rest. He now introduced principles. There is a power of God that is invested in buying and selling. But with respect to this tragedy now, you need a higher level of power. Shut your door and begin to pour the oil. Shut your door. Listen, if we do not access this level of power, can I tell you, the devil is going to start using diseases like cancer, HIV, all these satanic diseases, and he's going to waste a generation. There are real spirits that are oppressing God's people. There are mysterious occurrences happening to men in business. A man will build a house that he knows he built well. Some wind will just come and the whole house collapses. That is not an architectural problem. That is witchcraft. The solution is not just to add cement. The solution is to understand the mysteries of priesthood. That somebody can go and stand there and say in the name of the Lord Jesus, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. Sit down. Can I give you the last one? And then I will teach you, oh dear, wherever we stop, we'll pray. Number one, the power of God programmed into laws and principles. Did you get that? Number two, the power of God that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. Number three, the power that is accessed through covenant connections. The third and final dimension of God's power is accessed through covenant connections. What does that mean? That means an individual who has a covenant with God that has allowed for certain manifestations of his power. When you get connected to that person by covenant or by prophetic covering, you can become a partaker and a beneficiary of that dimension of God's power. Even though personally you may not be able to command it in your life, but by reason of that connection. An example for the sake of time, you find that in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 5, then when we go to 13 from verse 1 to 6, it is the story of um, Abraham and Lot. The Bible talks about Abraham, that God called him, and he says, and Lot went with him. When we get to chapter 13 from verse 1, when you read down to 6, the Bible says Abraham became rich in cattle, rich in all of this because of his covenant with God. But it says Lot, who also went with him, with no effort on his part, also began to prosper. The moment Lot connected, disconnected from Abraham, he started going down until he found himself in Sodom. Covenant connections. Another example, that should be 2 Kings chapter 6. Give it to us, please. The story of Elisha, 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's start from verse 8. I hope I got that right. 2 Kings 6 and verse 8. The king of Syria warred against Israel. Watch this. And took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And every time the king discussed it, the Bible says, The man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you do not pass through this place. So the king of Syria kept getting angry. And he called his men and said, There is an insider betraying us here. And they said, No, my lord, not so. It is this prophet called Elisha. He's the one who has been revealing the secret. And he now sent warriors. Are we together now? He sent warriors and then by night, they encamped all around Elisha. And then by morning, that should be, give us verse um, 16. Give us verse 16. Elisha, the servant, was now afraid. And when they got up, there was an army all around them. And the Bible says, Elisha answered and said to him, Fear, fear not, for they that be with us 
are more than they that be with them. Now we're reading to 23, verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Listen, do you know the level of spiritual sacrifice and investment it takes for your eyes to be open under normal circumstances? And yet a prophet cheaply makes a request to God, not minding whether his servant believed it or not. And the Bible says the Lord opened the eyes of the young man I hope you know by now Gehazi had become leprous, so he was no longer his servant. He was another one now. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha, 18. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed again to tell you it is not a mistake. He said, smite these people, I pray, with blindness. That's it. And he smote them. Can you imagine? It was as if God was a slave to a man. Smites these people and that's it. A whole army. These men were dangerous people. Imagine Nigerian army, for instance, preparing for war. And suddenly the presidency gets a call that all our military men have become blind. Why? Because somebody sat on the mountain and made a decree. These men were alive on earth. He smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha, 19. And Elisha said to them, this is not the way, neither this is a city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. He led them to Samaria, verse 20. The Bible says it came to pass when they were come into Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of this man. What if their eyes did not open again? He was so sure, open their eyes that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? 22. And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? He says, Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go back to their master. 23. And he prepared great provision for them. Watch this. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. There is another way to keep a land safe. War is one strategy. The other one is through the accurate manifestation of superior prophetic manifestations. That a whole army, how do you know, who will you send to kill such a man? When you are blind before you arrive. If they send you, will you go? <laughs> Read about Elijah resting up the mountain and a band of 50 people come. You see how Elijah was harsh? He did not even command blindness. His own was fire to come on them. Another band came. Fire came. The third, when they came, they begged him. They said, it's not, we are not coming on our own. We were instructed. Please come down and follow us. They called him the troublemaker of Israel. This was Jezebel's old testament, testimony. There are men who will turn this world upside down. But hear me. This third level is very powerful because... There are possibilities you desire to work in your life, but as at yet you may not have ascended that realm in the spirit. You can through covenant connection align with men and women who by the grace of God have accessed those realms. And you can start partaking of those possibilities even before you come into it experientially. This is true. There are people who got planted under certain graces, under certain churches, and they began to prosper. And they did not even know so much about prosperity because they came under this third level of the power of God. When God calls men, you see, there are covenants that he has with them. And provided they walk in keeping with the conditions that maintain that covenant, there are graces that are released through those covenants. And the graces are not just for the benefit of the men alone. It says, I and the children that the Lord has given me. Is that in your Bible? We are for signs. Not I am for signs. We are for signs. It started with I, but it extended to the children that the Lord had given me. Then it says, we all together. The one with the covenant and the one who has come through connection. That's why certain times you see us speak in this ministry and sometimes you may think it's arrogance about certain graces that God has put here. 
that if you have an understanding, you see people come and stand and testify and just say it and sometimes respectfully speaking, very unassuming people and you are wondering how did this thing add up here? That is the power of covenant connections. If Jonah enters your boat, you will go down. Whether you are good or not, you can know all the principles that make you a businessman. Plus Jonah, you are going down. Am I right on that? If Jesus enters your boat, no matter what goes wrong, even if it's only water that is in the boat, with the presence of Jesus, it will not go down. Covenant relationships are powerful. So the Spirit of God told Philip, join this chariot. And he joined the chariot and he met an Ethiopian eunuch who was reading about the Messiah, the prophecy. He was coming from Jerusalem, the place of, of worship. And now he began to explain to him. And when they found water, he said, this is water, can I be baptized? He said, understandest what thou readest. He said, how can I accept some man teach me? Ladies and gentlemen, every time you see the power of God manifesting on earth, it comes across men on these three platforms. Number one, principles and laws that is not relationship dependent that is purely a matter of understanding are we together the second dimension that i've taught you is the highest that comes through relationships this one comes directly from god when you press into the things of god there is a deposit of divinity upon you that can be proven here and now and this is why we press in worship we press in prayer are we together we press in fasting we press loving jesus because we love him but we hope to be able to attain unto this state of power in the spirit and then the third god has connected us strategically to men and women across the globe to provide that advantage of accessing superior dimensions of god's power even through covenant connections now listen the last thing I'm going to teach you before we pray is for the power of God to be expressed on earth. Write it down, please. For the power of God to be expressed on earth. One of these five elements must be used. For the power of God to be expressed on earth. That means the power of God can never be expressed and seen in the world of men until his power is in partnership with one or more of these five elements. Put a colon and let me list the elements for you. Every time you see the power of God manifest in the Bible, every time you see the power of God manifest on earth, there must be a participation of these five elements. Number one, light light number two sound just right <laughs> you will never see the manifestation of the power of god on earth except it comes through these conduits one light two sound three fire four f e a r t h five water one light hmm. two sound three fire four f five water please look up these are mysterious elements that god planted in our world you will never see the manifestation of god's power until it comes through one or more of these elements are we together? This is very important. Now, watch this. God himself calls the word light. And speaking about light in John 1, 5, he says, The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Watch this. The entire creation from a biological standpoint today survives on light. Am I right on that? In this case, the light of the sun. In biology, we study about the light and dark reaction. Remember the process by which plants convert sunlight to chlorophyll? Remember you were taught in basic biology? Yes. Light. We draw sunlight and men on earth will die because there will no longer be plants. 
there will no longer be food. And it's mysterious that this light you see is older than everybody on earth, yet it does not diminish in glory. The light of the sun remains fixed. Never to diminish. Your cloth will diminish. Even your own face will diminish under normal circumstances. But this sun has remained constant. This light you see is a mystery. Till today, science cannot define light. They can only describe it using numerical figures. Light is a mystery. It was outsourced from the realm of the spirit. Are we together now? The first thing God released upon the earth was light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Element number one. Number two, sound. Sound. It is because of the presence of sound that words can move and can be heard. Am I right on that? Is that true? As powerful as words are, they are only as powerful as the sound that conveys them. This is very important. When you read Ezekiel chapter 47 for sake of time, you will see there, Ezekiel said, I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You see sound playing a role there. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Bible says they were all gathered in one place. The first thing that happened is suddenly there came a sound. Sound. The supernatural will never find expression until there is the element of sound. It's amazing that people can come here sick. People can come here oppressed. And all those spirits are hearing. And all the conditions are quiet until sound comes. In the name of Jesus Christ. The man who was seated at Gate Beautiful. His miracle was sound dependent. He was there for many years. But here comes an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, give I unto you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. That sound, the Bible says he lifted the man and he leaping stood. You have that down? Number three, fire. Hmm. The power of God manifests itself through the element and the conduit of fire. I wish I had time. I'm so sorry I'm compressing this. This thing that I've taught you can become a one-month lecture, back to back every day. I can break every one of these facets, but this is just to give us a general appreciation of power. Fire. Remember in Exodus chapter 3, that was the element that God used to draw the attention of Moses. A bush that was burning and yet would not be consumed. Is that in your Bible? Moses, fire. The element of fire. Fire till today is still a very mysterious, we give it all kinds of definitions. Can you imagine? Set fire in this place. You can't hold it. You can't box it. It will burn everything in front of it. Fire does not fear. Fire does not run away. You can't put it in your pocket. What kind of element is that? It is so light, you can set it anywhere. It is not so heavy, yet it will burn anything on earth. In fact, the judgment on earth will happen through fire. Fire is a mysterious element that reduces everything to its unit. Listen carefully. Fire reduces everything to its unit. Everything. Bring your car, as wonderful as it is, go and throw it into a blast furnace and watch that car become like a piece of paper. Fire is a deep mystery. You watch a beautiful building, let that building catch fire. The only thing that will be left is just the skeletal structure of that building. Fire. On the day of Pentecost, after the sound, the next thing that came, was fire fire it came and sat on their head and Jesus said there are two kinds of baptisms that will happen to you he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost you know as I just mentioned fire I just saw like just fire just 
he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost the baptism of fire is a different kind of baptism on his own like fire in your bones listen the supernatural only finds expression when it wants to find especially when God is revealing himself as a warrior and one who is coming in judgment his power is it comes through that conduit of fire number four for sake of time earth hmm. this one is a very mysterious element the earth look at me number one the earth is a universal point of contact that means everybody on earth what joins a point of contact means that I can guarantee that everybody is standing upon the earth. The earth is a universal point of contact. Number two, this earth you see, all of the food that man eats to live comes from the earth. This is a very deep mystery. When men die, we do not throw them in the air to float. We bury them in the earth. And after many years, if you go back there, all you will find is skeleton, and sand not skeleton and liver not skeleton and eyes every other thing that is not bones is reduced to dust it says for from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return do you know the meaning of that we depend on the earth literally for our survival because the plants the trees that feed us come from the earth Are we together now? Yes. So the prophet will say, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. There is something in the Bible called famine that at times of famine, even the earth does not produce. Are we together? The earth, something happens to the earth. Something is spoken to the earth that stops it from producing. And everybody starts suffering the Bible says even because the earth failed money failed and men came in Egypt and said buy us this earth you see is a mysterious substance the oil that has caused war across nations the earth agriculture that feeds nations the earth real estate that looks like the ultimate store of value the earth Real estate is not the sky. Real estate is the earth. Imagine how expensive a piece of earth is. Some of us have been looking for it all around this city. And even though you see it plenty, your portion has not yet come to you. Because there is a mystery that brings you to your portion of the earth. Do you believe what I'm telling you? When you move to America, respectfully, or you move to... Um, UK or you move to France you are simply moving from one part of the earth to another you are still in the earth is that true there are possibilities that are locked up within the earth and this is where because of the awareness of what I have told you there are people who have erroneously moving out of the way the Holy Spirit teach they've started manipulating things within the earth you see because they know that there is a dimension of God's power invested in the earth and that the earth is one of the conduits for the supernatural Jesus himself in trying to open the eyes of a blind man he spat on the ground is that true and he mixed it with clay and put it in his eyes and said go and wash at a pool called Siloam why would Jesus do that the prophets were eating the food that came from the earth and they said ah there is death in the pot it came from the earth agriculture we have all kinds of soils in fact the Bible even calls us earthen vessels earthen vessels that the best of us no matter how well decorated is an earthen vessel dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye.
pray 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 for your destiny salaska de bashka nakata branda kateka pos kate branda kata pakotos koto breka teka nakata the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 